Peace. Welcome to Dove Spot's Dojo, The Beat Bang Theory. I'm your host and Dove Spot instructor, Sharif Islam. And today, my guest is from the world renowned, world famous DITC, Digging in the Crates, one of the most influential producers and artists of our time, Lord Finesse. What's going on? Peace. What's going on, man? Good I'm to good, have you. Man. Good to have you. Good to have you, man. Great to be here, man. man. You are one of the few that's an artist and producer that's like in both fields, you up there. You know, you got a lot of producers. I mean, you like one of the first cats that I know of that were doing it. You know, you got we got Eric Sermon. Yeah, I can name them. You got yeah. Eric Sermon, you got Q Tip, Tip. you yep. got uh Red Man, you got Lodge Professor, you got Pete Rock. Rock. So a lot of people like you guys were like pioneers as far as artists and producing in both good in, in both fields. I think for any artist that's that's coming in the game, whether it's, it's hip hop, whatever, mm -hmm. I think you should you should know what you're getting into. Right. You know, especially with music, because even if you have to talk to a producer telling them uh, what you want, right. you got to be able to describe what you want. Let me ask you this: What was some of like some of your favorite records that you produced, whether you were on them or you produced for someone else, and kind of like. Like, what, what made them your favorite that maybe like, you know, you, your creative process in that or, um, you know, working with the artists? I think one like? of my favorite records is Off and On. Off and On? Okay. I like creating magic with artists. Like, I consider myself a tailor. You okay. know, let's say I'm a tailor. I might, you know, got some beats already done. Mm -hmm. So I got suits done, <laughs> and you know, if you want to buy one of them suits, fine. But if you're patient and you really want to create some magic, I got some fabric in the back. <laughs> like that. I, I like can that. I can size you up, fit you up with the fabric. Right. So when you walk in a party, you got something nobody has, and that's the beauty of Tell music. Tell made for the artist. Right. So. Yeah. When you can sit with an artist and pick the artist's mind and see where they want to go with it, and right. they can name different instruments and, you know, and y'all sit and build that together and it becomes phenomenal, then it's dope. Me and you were talking about this, we was chopping it up before, mm -hmm. about the process. And, you know, we're in a digital age with the high right. technology. You just pulled out, for those who don't know what these are, these are 45s. These are it's actual vinyl people. Who are, you know, I know YouTube is the digital crate of today, but it's something about nah, I mean, the record. It's cool. YouTube is good. When you rely too much on it, you're bugging. <laughs> you know, because it's nothing like, like vinyl, man. Right. It's nothing like vinyl. It's nothing like playing a record, panning the left side, panning the right side, and most of all, getting that warm analog sound. Now with YouTube, you gotta hope somebody's gonna have that love and passion that we're talking about oh. to rip it the right way with the right quality so you can do what you want with it. Right. You only as good as what somebody rip and put up there. Exactly. So if they don't rip nothing and put it up there, then you trash, you're done. <laughs> you, you, you straight right, done. Right, right. So you listen to the music. You don't right. just look for samples you actually listening to these records. Right, I mean, because when I'm listening to the records, I'm listening for different things. Right. Yeah, I can listen to see if I'm gonna find a great loop. Or I can listen to see, okay, it's some kicks and snares on here. With the kicks and snares, I can create my own drum kit. Right. You know, my own personal drum kit. Not wait until it's uploaded on the internet and <laughs> I got a drum kit now, right. but to create your own drum kit and signature sound, and when you produce a record and people go, yo, what was those drums you used? It makes you feel good because it was well worth putting that yeah, energy yeah, in right. to creating your own drum kit and your signature sound. What was you using? What was your stuff, your, your, you know, your, your arsenal, your weapons of choice? Um, back in the days, my weapon of choice was um, the SB1200 and the 950. It so, was in the world of limitation. That's right. what I, you that's what the, I you, always like to say, the world of limitation. Right. So 
when we created something phenomenal, knowing all the curves and the tricks that we had to do to make it sound the way it sound, mm -hmm. it gave you a real, a real incredible sense of pride that right. now when you have all this and it's limitless, I don't think a lot of producers of today's generation can appreciate the limitless mm -hmm. because they wasn't yeah, limited. You know mm -hmm. I'm hip to the game. Right. Always be the same. Cause when I'm broke, I got things I shut the rain. Ain't a damn thing changed. I'm hip to the game. Right. I'm basically now, I'm, a, I'm an MPC dude. Prime story. I'm in um, Cali. Dr. Dre, a good friend of mine, Melman. Ness, what you need in the studio? 1200, give me my knock. Good. So, you know, anybody who has an SB1200, you already know when you load it, might take three minutes to load. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Make that little noise while it's loading. So, you know, I play the beat. Oh, okay, that's, that's, that's dope. Play something else. <laughs> now they playing beats. When they playing beats, they playing like seven, eight at a time. Bow, turning off. Bow, turning off. Bow. And I, I just felt at that point, I felt like Fred Flintstone. I really <laughs> felt like I'm um, when keeping it real goes wrong. Until they came to this joint right here. Matter of fact, I was there when it was. But this was just an idea, it was a theory. Right. And they gathered up different producers from all over the world to put their ideas into this machine. If you're an MPC person, it allows you to go to the next level without losing your past. Right. I think when you pick a machine, it should always be chosen by your work habits. And the purpose of getting the machine is something that's gonna cut your workload. That's gonna make your work easier. It's gonna make it quicker. Not saying you should do a beat in five minutes. And if it happens, it happens. I'm not a five minute dude. So are you using software with this? I mean, I know this, because we know this is kind of like hardware, software. It's like you said, if your past and your future kind of come together. Yeah. But what, what, what software are you using? Uh, uh, I love AW? Ableton. Ableton okay. do. Right. Live and die by Ableton and I kind of use them together. Right. Use them both standalones at the same time. Okay. I work my magic in Ableton, and then I consolidate my magic, and then I drop it into the MPC. So let's see what you, what, what you got here. Um, you know, and then you brought some treats. You brought some, you're gonna, you're gonna educate us on your flow, and definitely the artist sampling. pieces that I would need and I kind of got them chopped up in here already okay. right so let's go to main right so what I heard I sped it up right and so I would take that and I would program it to when you when we played the record and the record is sounding like player again mm -hmm. It's different where you hearing it one way, but the way I'm playing it, it doesn't sound nothing like Which how, right, how, how, how and it's just little, it it's bits and pieces. And I know in, in the 
course, here at Dubspot, I, I go into just the art of chopping and sampling. Like, right. it, it's, it's an art form. It's, you know, not anybody can just, you know, okay, I'm picking this piece to pick. You got to know the right things to chop. Yeah, here, here's how you would compose it as an individual. It's right. like, oh, man, I would take that and I would do this and I would do that. Like, I could pull different samples and I would rock different samples different ways. Mm -hmm. Like, and like I said, once again, you don't have to use the whole record. You could use a bit and a piece. Mm -hmm. I'm looking through my stack here. From, from different records. From, from different, different records, records, you know. Let me throw this on right. It's on 45. That's all I would need right there. Yeah. I don't I don't need to put nothing else on it. Mm -hmm. I would take a hit and then I would funk it out because it's it's going at a high speed, but if you slow it down, it's gonna be gangster. Mm -hmm. That's all I need. Then I add the drums and the program mm -hmm. into it. Then I'm gonna add bass notes, I'm gonna add horns, I'm gonna add, I might add a choir, I might do something crazy. Right. <laughs> but, you know, to me, that's the art of sampling. When you could take a small piece, you don't have to take a whole loop. Like I said, y'all I, I had me digging in the stash. <laughs> and like even Bismarck, Bismarck replayed this, you know? Classic. Got something like this where you know it might have been used, might have heard it. Real gritty, real gangster. Mm -hmm. you person rhyme off this part. Yep. No loop. Right, exactly. That's a loop. loop. Now if you take that and you Jesus. loop that, that that might you might come off with that, you know? <laughs> you know, as you're going through your records, it's just like a, a sound designer or somebody's going through their patches in Massive or, or Contact or something like that, right? Right. Same same kind of deal, but you're using, you're using right, vinyl I'm records. I'm using vinyl. Right. This is what you call a real musician, a real lover of the passions of art, the form. He's got credits, he's touring the world, he's, he's etched in, in this music game, and he's giving love and respect to the old, new, and everything in between. And that's just, he just said it earlier, like he I just mean, loves music, man. He loves music, that's, 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 that's inspiring. That's what it's about to me. Right. I, I came up following these icons, Molly Marl and Premier and Lars Professor and Dr. Dre. These are icons. Right. Without a doubt, I want to give credit to my icons. They do it in, in rock all the time. Right. You know, the Beatles, right. Billy Joe, right. Bruce Springsteen, U2. I don't never hear the word O oh, when you say these that's great right. names. You're right. Only in hip hop, right. <laughs> you start putting, oh, yeah, that's some old school dudes. <laughs> Why can't they just be icons? icons. Why, why you got to put old with it? Like, right. you know, these dudes are icons. These are legends. These are pioneers. These are trailblazers. Right. The level and the passion that I got for the people that, that inspire me right. to do music. Well, man, thank you. Thank you again. Thanks for having no me. No finesse, man. The pleasure. The pleasure, definitely. I'm honored. If you're interested in courses in L.A., New York, and online, check out DubSpot.com. Peace. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore Dove Spot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.